Hey guys, Antonio here and today we're talking about the new banned foreign policy in Toronto. As you may hear, the city of Toronto has recently implemented a new policy that prohibits certain non-resident foreign nationals from purchasing real estate in the city. This policy has sparked a lot of controversy and raised many questions about its implications and effects. Let's grab the coffee and talk about it right after this. Hey, welcome back to the AV Team Real Estate channel and I'm Antonio, a local real estate agent in the GTA. It is a new year and this is my first video. I hope you have a great holiday and let's get going for the new year. So what exactly is this policy and why was it put in place? According to the city, the goal of the policy is to address the issue of housing affordability and to make sure that the city's housing market is accessible to residents rather than being driven up by foreign investors. Under the policy, non-resident foreign nationals are banned from purchasing residential properties in Canada for two years starting on January 1st of 2023. However, many have criticized the policy for being discriminatory and for unfairly targeting certain groups of people. Some have also pointed out that it may have unintended consequences such as affecting the city's economy and real estate market. So what do you think about this new policy? Do you think it's necessary measure to address housing affordability or do you think it's unfair and potentially harmful? Let us know in the comment down below. This policy wasn't a surprise since the federal government introduced the ban as part of its April budget, saying the measure would help improve housing affordability for Canadians. But do you think this policy could have a big impact on affordability for Canadians? For that, I could just put out some of the articles that I found from the GTA group at Remax Ultimate Realty. This survey found that foreign investors make up a small fraction of Canadian real estate purchases. Large cities like Toronto and Vancouver have been talking a lot about foreign investment for decades. Many residents blame foreign purchasers who hide their money in condos, semi-detached homes, and detached homes for the issue of high demand and low supply. However, proof of that was hard to come by and until the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corp CMHC, the country's leading mortgage insurer, polled condominium property managers in 2015. CMHC asked for the percentage of homes owned by investors whose permanent residence is overseas. The results were much lower than many had expected. The survey found that roughly 2.4% of Toronto condos and 2.3% of condos in Vancouver were owned by overseas investors. The highest concentration of foreign-owned condo was 6.9% in various parts of Montreal. The figure was so low that economists said it was unlikely that foreign investment had a significant impact on home prices. At the same time, CMHC's chief economist Bob Dugan said that the agency would look at ways to expand the scope of research. And according to this article, Baker Real Estate Inc., for those who are unfamiliar with Baker, they are one of the largest sales and marketing team for a large portion of Ontario's pre-construction. And they released a report of foreign buyer analysis pointing how, despite the fact that this is not the case, it is widely believed that foreign buyers are driven away local buyers. According to the study, which was written by Ben Myers, president of Bullpen Research and Consulting, only 3% of Baker sales, which totaled 39000 during this time, were made to buyers outside of Canada in the previous 10 years. In contrast, according to the CMHC analysis, only 3.3% of Ontario properties had at least one non-resident owner's barely market shaping percentages. It is also important to note that China and India, which are the countries of origin for both investor and newcomers, have tightened the regulation on capital exports, making it more difficult to transfer money out of those countries. We can answer that question with the help of a report from Altus Group LTD. They discovered in January that one in every two residents in the Greater Toronto Area are bought by immigrants, who are defined as people whose country of origin is not Canada. In addition, Canada anticipates welcome 500,000 immigrants annually, 30% or more of whom will settle in Toronto, which was enhanced demand for house and investment ownership in the near future. There is evidence that domestic investors 
who own numerous property purchased more than a quarter of Toronto real estate, despite the fact that there is evidence that new immigrants dominate the housing market. The majority of buyers are now owners of numerous properties, according to a TerraNet research that examined transactions from January 2011 to August 2021. TerraNet is a private company that runs the province land registry. One in four Ontarian home buyers are now represented by these investors. In Toronto, their percentage is much higher, meaning that one of every four property owners in a city also has a second home there. At the end of the day, we are now facing supply and demand. Enough about foreigners, but what exactly is exempt from this new foreigner ban policy? Canadian citizens and permanent residents, international students who meet certain requirements, including having spent the bulk of the previous five years in Canada, they would be able to purchase a property for no more than 500000 Workers who have worked and filed tax return in Canada for at least three out of the four years prior to purchasing a property. Diplomats and members of international organization living in Canada. Foreign national with temporary residence status, including people fleeing conflict and refugees. Building container more than three dwellings units and recreational property, such as cottages, cabins, and other vacation homes would also be exempt. There is also a section here that says that students working towards the permanent residency and planning to find work and transition may be exempt as well. But it depends on how they prove and meet the requirements regarding the length of time spent in Canada. Non-residents who violate the ban of purchasing property as well as anybody who normally assists them in doing so may be found guilty and fined up to 10000 and the court may also order the sale of the property. In my opinion, it had a little impact so far, similar to previous foreigners' tax policies such as the NRST announced in 2017, a 15% tax for foreigners and an additional 5% in 2022. In addition to the small percentage of non-resident buyers overall, I don't think there will be a big impact. And if you explore the exemption that I just mentioned, there are far more gray area where you could still find a way to buy property as a newcomer. It might just be a political move, but we have to wait and see how it turns out. I hope this will give you an idea of what this new policy means in Canada. And if you enjoy the content like this, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to chat about the current real estate market, don't hesitate to contact me via the number on the screen or simply book a call with me using the first link in the description down below. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.